On the last day of her life, young mom Denise Amber Lee was abducted from her home, taken on a joyride in a green Camaro, and then she might still be alive today if her 911 call hadn't gone horribly wrong. Denise Amber Lee was a 21-year-old woman from Northport, Florida. She met her husband Nathan when they were teenagers. Denise was 17 and Nathan was 19. While they were dating, Nathan bought her a heart-shaped ring. They got married shortly after. Don't you wish love was that simple? Then they had two kids, Noah and Adam. Talk about a picture-perfect family. Well, up until this point. On January 17th, 2008, Nathan left for work as usual. Nathan and Denise talked on the phone around 11 a.m. At that time, Denise was on the back porch cutting Noah's hair. Fast forward to 3.30 p.m., Nathan came home from work to see that Denise was nowhere to be found. Their two-year-old Noah and six-month-old Adam were in the same crib, which was unusual. Denise's things were still in the house. There was no sign of forced entry or struggle. So either Denise left his ass or she was snatched up. Nathan called 911. Denise's neighbor told the police that she saw a suspicious green Camaro driving back and forth down the road around 2 p.m. The Camaro made a few rounds and ended up in Denise's driveway. Her neighbor, Jennifer, saw the Camaro drive off, but didn't see Denise in the car. The police identified the owner of the green Camaro as Michael King. Oh, did I mention that Denise's father is a detective? Yeah, his name is Rick. He called the whole crew to search for the Camaro. Here's where it gets crazy. The police then get a call from a woman who doesn't immediately identify herself. Spoiler alert, it's Denise. Denise had gotten a hold of her captor's cell phone while he was outside of the car. Once he got back in, she had his phone in the back seat and dialed 911. She was pretending to talk to her abductor while he was driving in the car, but she was actually on the phone with the dispatcher, slyly answering questions they asked. When the dispatcher asked Denise, what's your address? She responded with, please, just take me to my house. Can you take me home? On the tour, please. She made it seem like she was begging Michael to take her home, but she was actually providing crucial information to the police. However, the police weren't able to track the location of the phone as it was a burner. Wow. Denise was one smart cookie. Or should I say, a no-bake peanut butter pie. The police get another call 10 minutes later. This time, it's from a woman calling the dispatcher on behalf of her dad, Harold. Harold's cousin had asked his cousin for a flashlight, a gas can, and a shovel. He said it was for a lawnmower that needed fixing, but to Harold, something sounded suspicious. Guess whose cousin is? None other than Michael King, the guy who owns the green Camaro that Denise's neighbor saw. Despite the suspicious requests, Harold gave Michael the sketchy tools he asked for. Shady guy asks you for a bunch of random tools and you just give it to him, come on. He then saw a woman tied up in Michael's Camaro. When she peeked out, Michael shoved her back down. Out of concern, Harold drove over to Michael's house. Surprise, there was no lawnmower. Another 911 call, this is the one that could have broken the case and maybe saved Denise. It's from a woman named Jane. She was driving on the highway and she heard someone screaming. It was coming from a Camaro. I wonder who that could be. She thought it was a child until she saw a hand come out and violently slap the back window. The man driving was pushing her down. Jane tried to follow the Camaro. She stayed on the phone with the police for nine minutes in total, giving them any information she could about the Camaro's whereabouts. Jane lost sight of the car, but it's cool. The police are on the case, right? Turns out that the dispatchers Jane talked to were from the county. They never gave the information she provided to the city officers on duty who were searching for Denise. Let's make this clear. It could have saved Denise's life if the information was relayed between the county and the city police departments. About two and a half hours after Jane's phone call, two police officers were set up near the highway when they see a Camaro. Dun, 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 dun. They follow the Camaro and they try to get the Camaro to stop multiple times. It didn't stop until they threatened to shoot. The driver got out of the car. It was Michael. He was drenched and muddy. They found a cell phone without a SIM card or battery, a gas can, and a shovel with 
dirt on it. Hmm, sound familiar? And a heart-shaped ring in the back seat. Yep, the adorable heart-shaped ring from Nathan. But there's no Denise. Two days later, someone noticed a disrupted section of land. The location was a few miles away from where Jane last saw the Camaro. Officials dug up three feet of dirt to find Denise's body. At the trial, the jury was unanimous in finding Michael guilty. So justice was served. Denise's father, AKA the police detective, helped create the Denise Amber Lee Act, which provides voluntary training for dispatchers. It was passed unanimously. Nathan started the Denise Amber Lee Foundation to honor his wife and to raise awareness for stricter training and protocol for 911 operating system. If 911 dispatchers had received this level of training, maybe Denise would be here today. It's a crazy world out there. Try not to get caught up in it. Eat well, stay safe, and watch out for Camaros.